this video is going to have a bit of narrative with it. I feel like it's important that I communicate with um, the people who are participating in organized gang stalking. Um, through my many encounters, I have realized that a lot of people are misled into thinking one thing over another. I don't exactly know the stories that they're telling people, but if they are lying and telling you that you are just doing community watch, but you're following someone around, you're taking their pictures, you're spying on them, you're invading their space, their privacy, you are thus violating their First Amendment rights, their, <laughs> their ability to just be human. Um, you know, this country was founded on the constitutional rights, and a lot of it has been misconstrued, misrepresented, and redirected towards some form of oppression. And I'm not going to go into a black and white spiel. I'm just talking in general. By the way, I don't want anyone to think that I am racist, because I'm not. Um, it's kind of like an um, oxymoron for me to be anyways, because my genealogy is, is all mixed up. I have some uh, Native American roots as well as African American roots and any person who's a part of a genealogy of slaves in this country, you already know, well maybe you don't if you didn't do your research, but history tells us that there was always a mixture of uh, <clears throat> interracial um, not relationships, but child's children being produced from either the plantation owner sleeping with the slave and getting her pregnant type of thing. It was very common back then. Anyways, I'm not going to go into a spiel about that. I just want to explain that it is a bit of an oxymoron for me to um, be racist and say I don't like the white man this and I don't like the white man that. But I am, in fact, stating that there is a pattern of behaviors that comes from um, this particular group of people, unfortunately. And I guess you could say that there is a pattern of behaviors that follow all different types of other cultural backgrounds. If that is what you think, then in a sense, you are right. Um, whether they're statistically based, morally based, or even the absence of morality, or if it's just your feelings, you're entitled to your opinion, and that's just fine, just like I'm entitled to mine. But um, going back to the basis of this narrative while I'm driving, by the way, I'm not driving with my camera focused so that you can pick up my voice. I could always do a voice recording or a selfie recording at any time. This is absolutely intentional. Um, and I'll get back to my point again, but the reason why I'm filming is because I've been experiencing a lot of gang stalking by vehicle. There's the whole boxing in and um, intentional traffic jams and all of that other stuff that's been happening. And, great, now somebody wants to be tapping into my uh, voice recording. I have this app on my phone that lets me know that somebody is tapping in. And so now I know that somebody's absolutely listening in. But I'm going to continue. 
because it is for those who are participating in gang stalking. There's a lot of people, like I said, who um, Jeez, I wonder if I even finished my thought. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I'm recording because I've been experiencing a lot of strange and unusual, well, uh, escalation of strange and unusual driving, um, intentional traffic jams, um, the boxing in, um, you know, this whole tactful way of monitoring by car they don't know where I'm going, they don't have any idea what I'm doing type of thing, so uh, just to let you all know, those of you who are empowered individuals, um, just to let you know when they are doing that, most of the time it's because they don't have enough intelligence to um, put other operatives in place to track you, so they have to slow you down and create a traffic jam. I've seen it with my own eyes. I made sense of it all. I've experienced it enough times to understand what's going on. But yeah, you're in a traffic jam where somebody's driving in the fast lane at 20 miles per hour and every other lane has a car in it and they're all driving pretty much neck to neck or side by side. Or somehow there just seems to be a cluster of vehicles just all around you on the highway and then you happen to go over a hill and you notice there's nobody in front of them it's because they're doing that intentionally to slow you down and to keep track of you and they want to put somebody in place ahead of you so that that person can let the next person know that they see you and that you pass by them so forth and so on now that's why I'm recording while I'm driving. But here's the message I'm sending to those who are participating in this organized gang stalking. First and foremost, you more than likely don't know that this is called organized gang stalking. You've been told that it is your civic duty, possibly, to monitor the community, to make sure your family and your children are safe against pedophiles, sex offenders, um, drug trafficking, human trafficking, and the like. You've been told that it is your civic duty to report it when you see it. Such as they say, if you see something, say something. And they have all of these interesting apps. I've actually tried them myself. And these apps, usually will um, give you an opportunity to text, send a text to this number, and sometimes they will invite you to take a picture and send an image, right? Sometimes these apps will also give you the opportunity to record. I haven't seen that one yet, but New York City 311 has an app where they encourage you to, if you see something, say something. And <clears throat> they're also now telling you who to watch out for. And they may say something like, um, this person just moved into the neighborhood. Um, there's a young black guy with a young black woman and they have two small children and they're posing as a legally married couple but they're not they're running a major drug pen and they steal from the community uh, the husband is also a murderer and the wife is uh, ex-marine um, and the children are snitches or they, they uh, scope out in their parents absence they pretend to be good little children but they're really not. Um, the husband or the, the male in the relationship will often go for walks. Um, he's making a hit or he's dropping off or picking up and you must watch him. 
because uh, you could be his target and he may kill you or someone that you know. And you being a law-abiding citizen, a taxpayer, and um, you being the person that, you know, you go to church, you know, if not every Sunday, you go on holidays, and you know it's the right thing to do. So you say, okay, I could do that. And then they tell you, okay, well, we need you to come down to City Hall you to fill out some paperwork because we need to make sure that we have you on record if we need to call you in for a court date to be a witness um, we also have some some information to share with you so that you're well aware of this community watch organization um, and then you go in there and then uh, fill out all these paperwork and everything and um, you're on your way. You think that you're doing your civic duty. You're um, participating in law enforcement. You're helping them out. And by the way, that's not a bad thing to help out law enforcement. Um, another thing, and many of my videos indicate that there are some police officers that are involved in gang stalking. And that is true. But let me also say this, I know that there are some police officers, federal agents, CIA agents, NSA agents, government officials who do not support gang stalking. And there seems to be a huge shift in uh, the role and actions of justice against this injustice. So I want to make it expressingly clear that I am not negatively speaking about law enforcement, but I do want to state the fact that there are some who are in law enforcement that do participate in gang stalking. There are some who are federal agents, NSA agents, CIA agents that participate in this. It has been documented. This is not me researching and investigating any one in particular. This is me doing my homework and um, watching C-SPAN, um, Fox 5, um, NBC, um, Eyewitness News, uh, <laughs> on and on and on. These are countless, countless, countless um, documents, um, emails, um, video footage, um, testimonials that has brought me to this conclusion. And I also understand that even those who are um, Secret Service or, or um, law enforcement that are participating in this, a, a lot of them are not doing this willingly. I understand that too. So let me just make sure that that is clear. Um, there are a lot of good police officers out there. And no, they didn't threaten me to say that. Nobody paid me to say that. Um, I know that for a fact. I do know that for a fact. There are some good guys out there who actually, um, when they applied for the job, when they went through the training, when they went through their exercises, they said that they want to do this for the good of the people, for the good of the nation, for the good of the country. And that's an honorable thing. And... Um, 